Hello everyone and welcome. So in this video I wanted to show you a few techniques in Odini when I was working in this project. Basically I want to show you how to add more life to it by using let's say cups for texturing, uh, doing some water drops and also add more life to this otherwise boring lettuce. So yeah let's get into it. So the first thing I wanted to show you is uh, on how to deform a bit this lettuce to add uh, a bit more detail. So I'm starting by iso isolating the lettuce and I imported this as an FBX from ZBrush and it comes with a name attribute from the subtools. So here I have the lettuce and my final goal is to deform the ends or the edges to have this undulating effect as you can see. It is just a lazy way of doing it. I could have sculpted it a bit more and added more detail, but I felt like I felt like using Odini to do some operations, some final touches. So I'm first isolating the, the lettuce, then running a loop, because I have to. But the principle is really easy. We isolate the, these corner edges, these hard angles. So by using the min edge angle in a group node. Uh, then I'm converting those edges to lines and blasting everything but uh, but this the primitive zero in this case isolating just one doing a basic resample and fusing to unite the the curve then from here we can deform it using the scene function as you can see it's really simple just scene of the curve view uh, it's not really curve view, but it's using the same principle. And I'm just displacing it, as you can see. Now, the idea is to apply this to the geometry. And you can do that by saving a rest state, which in this case is before we apply the deforming geometry. And then with the lattice set to points, and you can play with the radius and with the normalized threshold. You can input the rest geometry in the second input and on the third you input the deformed geometry. And you go from this to this more life-like geometry. At least that's that was my idea. And then you can... I can also compile this, I believe. Yes, I didn't do that, it's just two pieces. So yeah, that was the first tip. So now I wanted to show you how you can create some water drops in a really simple way and cheap way, at least, I believe. And the way you do that, in this case the way I'm doing it, is by isolating the parts that will receive those water drops. And then I'm remeshing, and the reason I'm remeshing is because uh, before we didn't have a consistent amount of geometry or distribution of geometry and that will not work for this approach so I'm remeshing and then subdividing in this case open subdiv loop because we are working with triangles and then I'm creating an attribute noise as you can see by crunching the, the values I can get these these isolated spots, these islands, doing a second one to add smaller ones as you can see. Then in this wrangle I'm displacing that geometry along the normal, those areas along the normal, um, blasting away anything that, that is not part of those uh, areas, creating an add to delete any unused points but this is really a mess and can't be used. So I'm also deleting the interior part, as you can see, by working out the distance between the bounding box center 
and then just removing by threshold. Then I'm doing a remeshed grid and this looks like it's going to work a bit better and I'm using tin plates so we can work with single-sided geometry. Assembling and, and grouping randomly some parts that I want to delete because I felt that was just too much. Unpacking and doing a basic PDB operation to reshape the the bubbles or the water drops basically basically by doing a pdb from polygons reshape a bit and converting to polygons and that's how the water drops were done that's how so now let's have a look on how to do the shading or the texturing for this paddy that you see in the final render so Let's dive into that network and I will get some space in here. So the idea is simple, is to layer a bunch of different noises and I'm doing uh, fractural, fractural 3D noises and for that you need to rasterize the original position so you can fit that into the position of the fractal noise. So this is my first noise uh, that will act as an overall displacement and it will also affect the, the albedo or the SSS. Then I have a second one and a finer detailed one and finally this one. And this will make more sense if I start to look at the first the colors. So with the first noise that we have in here I am blending two colors and using that noise as a mask so this is our first noise then this shabby chef is being used yet with another color as you can see blending starting to shine those noises and this one is the finer detail so a darker color to have those fine details and finally the grease part which is that last noise we looked at as you can see in here and for the displacement let's see if this doesn't break i'm gonna start to disable them and so the first noise that we looked looked uh, in a minute is just uh, an overall displacement that i'm using and as you can see i have these multiply constants and remaps it's just a way to control the noise so when it goes to render i don't have to play with a remap and reduce or reduce the displacement amount so yeah usually you want this pretty low so this is the the first noise then i'm lay, layering the second one which is adding quite a bit of detail as you can see that chebyshev i just found that worked really well and then for the third one is adding that finer detail if you remember from here so this finer detail and finally displacing the grease part as you can see this part in here which you can see also in here so those yellow spots so yeah that's basically the the texturing of the paddy and i'm doing that for all the other geometries that you see in here and let me just do a final render so yeah, that was my attempt on creating a CGI burger. If you want, you can grab the full scene on my Patreon. And I hope you have learned something new from this video. Let me know in the comments. And also, if you want to create uh, a more realistic burger, I couldn't recommend enough this channel, Kote Anan. And he also gave me some feedback on my burger because I, I was inspired by this amazingly detailed burger that he created and he does for his channel 
it's a long video a long series of videos so if you're really interested in creating something similar you can check out this channel other than that thank you for watching and i'll see you i'll see you next time thank you